Today's lesson is going to concentrate on cells. We usually begin talking about cells with the cell theory. So the cell theory has three main parts to it. All living things are made up of cells. Unlike when we talked about other organisms, if it's a non-living thing, it would be made up of atoms. Living things, made up of cells. Cells are the basic unit of life, and all cells come from pre-existing cells. It sounds fairly basic, however, there are some exceptions to the cell theory that deal with questions that scientists have had over the years. The exceptions to the cell theory include, well, what about mitochondria and chlor chloroplasts? They can reproduce without the cell. They have their own DNA. Viruses need a host to reproduce. How do they work into the cell theory? They can reproduce, but they can't reproduce without a host. Are they considered cells still? That's one question that scientists still have. One of the biggest questions that everybody would agree on that's a big problem is, how did the first cell originate? Where did it come from? If all living things are made up of cells, how did the first cell come to be? The second thing we'd like to talk about with cells are the differences between the types of cells. There are two main types of cells that we're going to be discussing, eukaryotes and prokaryotes. There are some main differences and similarities between them that we usually consider. Eukaryotic cells are larger, whereas the prokaryotic cells tend to be smaller. The eukaryotic cells are much more complex, whereas the prokaryotic cells are much simpler, very simplistic, very primitive. The eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound organelles, whereas the prokaryotic cells have no membrane-bound organelles. So the examples of the organelles would be a mitochondria. Mitochondria has a membrane surrounding it. A chloroplast. Eukaryotic cells have these organelles with membranes surrounding them, whereas a prokaryotic cell does not have these organelles. One of the other main organelles that would be membrane-bound would be the nucleus. So examples of each of the types of cells, a eukaryotic cell are plant cells, animal cells, and fungus. The examples of prokaryotic cells are bacteria and the archaea. The organelle is defined as an area of a cell with a specific function or job. They're kind of like little mini organs is what the translation is. The examples of organelles, the common ones that we talk about are the mitochondria, chloroplast, and nucleus. We'll get into others as we move on. There are lots of similarities between these different types of cells. All cells have a cell membrane. The prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells both have ribosomes and all cells have a cytoplasm. You might want to put a star next to the two terms cell membrane and cytoplasm. All living cells have a cell membrane and a cytoplasm. In terms of complexity, usually we like to talk about things from the least complex to the most complex in terms of organization. So the smallest thing inside of a cell is the organelle. The next largest thing would be our cells. If we have a group of cells working together to perform a job, that would be a tissue. A group of tissues working together to perform a similar job would be an organ. And then a group of organs working together to perform a similar job would be an organ system. And then those organ systems working together to maintain balance would make up an organism. So the least complex is our organelle. The most complex is the organism. When we look at our types of cells, we also like to take the eukaryotic cells and compare our main cells that we study, which are plant cells and animal cells. Some of the things that we like to do is we like to look at them underneath the microscope and try to figure out how we would identify them based on their appearances and structures they might have. So we would know we were looking at something that was a plant cell if it had a cell wall, if it had a large water vacuole inside, if they had chloroplasts, and typically plant cells are going to be a rectangular shape and they will usually have a green color to them based on the pigment chlorophyll that's inside the chloroplasts, which we'll talk about that in quite a bit of detail later on. You might consider labeling these on the diagram that you have in your note packet 
Make sure you label the cell wall, which is just outside the cell membrane. Label the large water-containing vacuole, and also label chloroplasts. If we were to compare our plant cell to our animal cell, animal cells tend to be usually round shaped, but they're certainly not boxy. They come in all sorts of different shapes. Animal cells do not have a cell wall, which would give them that boxy, rigid, hard structure. So they have no cell wall, and they come in them many shapes. They do not have chloroplasts. They do not have a large water vacuole. They instead have very small vacuoles, which are used for storing food and wastes. And they also have centrioles, which we'll talk about when we talk about how cells reproduce. So remember our main differences between our plant cells and our animal cells. And that's it for today for cells.